Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 3 says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. As we follow our Lord, he brings us successfully through any season of life that we may face. In fact, he wants us to maximize every season for his glory and our good. Hey there, beloved. It's I, your brother, Joe Amato, once again with my channel, Pour Out Your Spirit. Today I have a special message for you entitled, God Can Maximize Your Season. I'm reminded of the life of Joseph. Particularly, Joseph went through five major seasons, pride, pit, promotion, prison, and palace. Let's look at each of these seasons and discover how they were maximized for God's glory and for Joseph's good. My original intention was to discuss all of these in this message, but because of the length, we'll need to look at it in different installments. Joseph's season of pride is highlighted by the boldness with which he proclaimed his own greatness over his brothers. It's bad enough that Daddy Jacob was ridiculously obvious about his favoritism of Joe. How? By making him his very own tunic, or coat if you will, of many colors. As we learn in Genesis 37 verse 3. There wasn't any way that Joseph could have worn that that coat, that I almost want to say monstrosity probably to his brothers, without drawing attention to himself. Come on. After all, it wasn't exactly the best outfit for shepherding with half-brothers from daddy's various sister wives. What did Joe know? He was only 17 years old at the time. To make matters worse, Papa's pet goes back to Jacob and tattles about his brothers not cool. Verse 4 says, But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to, to him. When your rivals are the same people in your own household, all that you share and the way in which you share it can all be misconstrued and used against you. Perhaps Joseph had the best motives and intentions. Let's reserve our judgment of him unlike his siblings. But added to the fact that he seemed to be flaunting his best kid status, probably appeared to be an opportunist who blabbed all of their misdeeds to daddy dearest in order to score more points for himself. Next, he brazenly dares to share a dream in which verse 7 states makes his brothers hate him even more. Specifically, the dream found in verse 7 is this as relayed to them by little Joe himself. There we were, binding sheaves in the field, and behold my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. I imagine the tone of his brothers when they were asking their questions in verse 8. Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? They had to be incredulous and fed up with this kid. How would you feel if you were in a big family and one of your youngest siblings came to you with these crazy notions and seemingly having delusions of grandeur? Revealing his next dream only compounded his problems with his brothers. His star would rise above theirs and his parents, the sun and the moon, and his brothers, the eleven other stars, would bow to his. They had to be thinking, wow, the hubris of this entitled brat. No matter what we think about what Joseph's motives, attitude, and heart was in all of this, it is clear that he had a root of pride. If he were humble, he would not have worn dad's coat in front of all of them. It should not have taken a lot to realize that his father's favor was driving a wedge between he and them, and that the coat was the manifestation of it. The tangible proof that none of them would measure up in daddy's heart and mind to his precious little Joey. 
Joseph should have also suggested to his dad that Jacob should not be so obvious and that he too, meaning Joseph also, should have been more considerate of his brother's feelings. In addition, he could have found the better way of convincing his brothers to do the right thing instead of reporting their missteps to daddy. But I have seen many parents make this mistake of training their children to tattle on each other. If you are a parent that does this, I'm saying to you that you must stop it right now. It's wrong and it's divisive. It will not help your children to form healthy relationships with each other if they always have to be concerned about what is going to go back to you in the negative. When my sons were young, I taught them not to tattle just as I taught students that I have taught through the years who would try to tattle about a peer to me. I sat them beside me and asked how it would make them feel if someone tattled on them. Of course they agreed, not very good at all. Then I would say, other than if someone is doing something that will hurt themselves or someone else, say this to your friend when you see them doing something wrong. I see that you are doing the wrong thing and I'm not going to tell on you, but I don't want you to get caught. If you keep doing it, you probably will. And I don't want you to be punished, because that's what happens when you get caught. Let me help you to do the right thing. But if you don't, I'm going away, because I don't want to get in trouble with you. When I worked in a Christian school, I would add the line, And remember, God is watching you. Lastly, I'd say you need to be a friend if you want to make a friend. I can't tell you the success that I had with this with my own children and my students as well through the years. Joseph's relationship with his brothers would have been a lot better if he had taken this approach. Finally, he could have brought the details of his dreams to his father instead of oversharing with his brothers who I think probably already heard enough. I can understand though that he lived and worked with them, so they were really all that he had. But for goodness sake, he just couldn't learn how to read a room. And Joseph needed to see that all of his problems with his brothers stemmed from his pride. Joseph's dreams were from God, but his pride was not from God. But it developed from Jacob's worship of him. No child should live with the burden of being daddy's perfect boy, or mommy's preferred child, or grandma's little angel. It was no wonder that pride took root in young Joseph. The trials of Joseph which humbled his pride were for Jacob's humbling as well. Jacob's endless doting wasn't helping Joseph become the man that God intended him to be. Joseph would never become the wise and merciful leader who would save a whole generation had he remained under Jacob's overindulgent tutelage. After all, an overabundance of pride doesn't bring you to greater heights in life, rather to the lowest depths. Joe would have done well to do what 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Joseph's pride was standing in opposition to the future that God wanted for him. Proverbs 16.5 says, The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. If Joseph could not shed his pride, he would have been of no use to the Lord. Joseph's season of pride would give way to his fall into that pit. Just as Proverbs 16.18 says, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. And Proverbs 11.2 confirms this, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. God will maximize your prideful season, even that season, and will bring, by bringing you chastisement, so that it will cause you to be humbled and that will produce wisdom in you. Or, you can make it a lot easier on yourself 
and yield willingly. Yield your pride to the Lord, beloved. Yes, the Lord desired to exalt Joseph in time for a very specific, very important purpose. But 17-year-old Joe, puffed up in his own head by his father, didn't know the truth of Jesus' Luke 14.11 words. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Your season of pride will give way to a humbling beloved. Not because God hates you, but because he hates your pride. Not because God doesn't want to bless you, but because he has destined you for greatness in him. Isaiah 57 verse 15 records the words of our Lord. For this is what the High and Lofty One says, He who lives forever, whose name is Holy, I live in a high and holy place, but also with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. How do you exit a season of pride? You bow to the Lord when trials and troubles come to humble you. You keep a lowly spirit and a contrite heart. Instead of hating those around you who correct you, or even those who hurt you, like Joseph learned to do in time with his brothers, you look inwardly and say to the Lord what the psalmist did in 51 verses 10 through 12. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Do you want to know God's grace? I mean really know it? Well, then humble yourself. As James 4, 6 reminds us, but he gives more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Why should you abandon your pride? Because God is on a mission to rid the earth completely of pride. Isaiah 23 verse 9 reveals the plan, saying, The Lord Almighty planned it to bring low the pride of all glory and to humble all who are renowned on the earth. Pride is a great deception, beloved. It is not reality. In reality, we are nothing without the Lord. He gave us life. He gave us our minds and giftings. Jesus paid the debt we could never pay. Paul wrote that he even worked in us both to will and to do his will. Knowing all this, how dare we boast in anything? Hear the words of a poem that the Lord birthed in me when I was still very young in the Lord. How can I boast when there's nothing in me, no room for pride nor for arrogancy? The very first breath he shot through my lung he gave the air that bounced off my tongue. The gifts that I have and the talents I'll find, he gave to me when he fashioned my mind. He even paid the large debt that bound me. He sowed my cross, I reaped his liberty, made me reborn into eternity, provided me with ultimate victory. I cannot even will, it's through him things I do. I'm just a shell who's been broken in two. How dare I boast when there's nothing in me, no room for pride, nor for arrogancy. Let's pray, beloved. Father God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you that you are who you are. For you are perfect in all of your ways, Lord. And we worship you as that Holy One, Holy One of Israel, great and mighty God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. How great and how special you are in our lives, O oh God, but how much more the realization when we are humbled and when we are lowly and when we are meek do we see your great glory and power revealed and how much more useful we are if we would but yield to you in all things. Father God, I do pray that you get in, at the root of pride in all of us. All who are watching now, Father God, I pray you would touch with the special touch of heaven, Lord God. 
by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. And Father, whatever the pride that they have to relinquish to you, that they would do so willingly, God, and out of a joyful heart, knowing that you love them more than anyone has ever and will ever love them, Lord. Father God, the first pride we have to yield is the pride that we think we can please you on our own. Your word says that only through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ do we have the hope of eternal life. Father God, I pray that if there is anybody watching right now that has not received you as Lord and Savior, that they will do so, even with a simple prayer. And if you are that person, pray after me, please, with faith, believing. Dear Lord, I thank you that when I was not sufficient to please you, to regain a relationship with you, that you provided Jesus, that your Holy Son Jesus, your very heart, you tore from yourself and you let him live a life on this earth to show us how to please you and by his own will your holy son Jesus became the Lamb of God slain before the foundations of the world that when he bore my sins on the cross and I accept him now as my Lord and Savior that father you are now my father you're my Abba my daddy and that you've washed away all my sins that you don't see them any longer you've removed them from me as far as the east is from the west and I am your own child now not because you created me but because you redeemed me Lord I pray that you give me the strength to walk after you to follow you in all things take up my cross and follow you as scripture teaches and I thank you, Lord, that I have the victory in you through all things, O oh God, the good times and the bad. In Jesus' name, amen. And now if there's anybody watching that already knows the Lord, that he is already your Lord and Savior, but you still see that there is a root of pride in you, let's yield it together to the Lord. Father God, Father God, I know I'm not perfect. And I know that Jesus came to provide the remedy for my sin and to establish right relationship with you. But Lord, there is still pride in my heart. And Father God, I pray that you would take it from me, O oh God. I yield it to you even now. In Jesus' name, help me to see my dependency on you in all things. Help me to acknowledge that I need you every day, in every way. You are my all-sufficiency. And Lord, when I fall and when I fail, I see that your grace is sufficient for me. And I thank you for this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen, beloved. Beloved, he who is exalted above all loves you enough to humble you when you need humbling. If you will not humble yourself. And I love you as well. Remember, the prideful will be brought down low, but great things await the humble, for as Jesus said, the meek shall inherit the earth. Please like, subscribe, and share this video and my channel with all who you think it would be a blessing to. As always, if you'd like to send a love offering, I've included information below the description of this video. Thank you in advance if you are doing so. If not, God bless you anyway. Let's pray together the prayer we always pray on this channel. Lord, in fact and in deed, pour out your Spirit, your wonderful Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my friend. Until next time, stay humble and stay grateful. See you soon. Love you.